In this episode of Interview, we're joined by Lisa Scott Lee, one of the members of the British pop group Steps and one of the founding partners at Dubai Performing Arts. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, Jane. And I must say, we're touching on your music career because you've just uh, got back together with Steps. You're, you've, you're hot off the heels of a little whistle stop tour. How's it going? We just released our new album, What the Future Holds, which was only last week. And um, I'm very proud to say it went into the iTunes charts at number one. Amazing. Um, number two in the UK charts. And it was number three in Australia and number five in Indonesia and just all over the world. We had lots of success with it. So uh, yes, it's, uh, you've caught me at a time where I'm feeling very blessed and grateful. We've been together for 23 years now. So we, ha we had a, a break um, a few years back. And I think, you know, the thing for us was the, our fan base is just so loyal and they kept asking, when are you coming back? And I think really we thought we, the easy option would to be to release a new, another Greatest Hits mm -hmm. and that would have been going down the easy route. But we wanted to give the fans something new and as artists as well, it's great to sing all your old hits, but when you're performing and you're touring the world, it's also nice to have new music and fresh music. So we recorded the new album and the title track, the, the single track was written by Sia, What the Future Holds. <laughs> So I'm a massive Sia fan, so it's wonderful to have a Sia track on the album. Do you think the industry has changed massively from when you started out? And what's that involvement been like for you? Do you know, honestly, Jane, we've seen such changes and it's evolved so much from 1997. Firstly, there was no internet. <laughs> yeah. We had no social media. Um, you know, the, this, the technology has come on so much mm. and it's a wonderful thing. Obviously, you've got your pros and cons for, for social media, but from our point of view, it's an instant discussion and uh, you get instant feedback from the fans because if you release a single, yeah. we can hear straight away what they think about it. Um, and also when we go on tour, we look at the streaming sites and so we can see which songs are most popular. So when we're putting our set list together, we can see exactly what the audience wants. COVID has impacted everybody and mm -hmm. every industry, every household. You know, why should we be supporting, especially the arts? In some countries, they're asking people to retrain. There's so many people and talented performers out there in the world, all over the world. Um, they've had the same training that I have. So I've been singing and dancing from the age of three uh, and I, got all, I um, achieved all my um, qualifications and exams in dance. Mm -hmm. And then I auditioned for Italia Conti, the stage school in London. And that's where I, finished my training and I became a teacher of, um, of dance. So I'm a qualified teacher, which is, enables me to do all this, which we will talk about. <laughs> um, and you know, it takes years and years of dedication and passion. And there's so many people out there in the same position as me. And I just feel really fortunate that Steps are still working and we can perform. And obviously it, it's different at the minute and we all have to be following the regulations and stay safe and what have you. But um, I think theatre and film and music, it, it's the entertainment that people need right now. Was it different once you'd made it to how you thought it would be? Because you say with the kind of your first love is the performance and with that does come the offshoot of fame. That yeah. isn't always pretty side of it. You know, did that have did that open your eyes to another side of the business? Yeah, I think it's it can be very difficult. Yeah. There's a lot of pressures on pop stars, um, sports stars, you know, anybody really in our in our field and in, in our industries. Um, and I think it's so it's so difficult because when you've trained all your life for something, that is the premise, you know, that's the most important thing. That's your your aim, that's your reason for doing it. But Obviously, when you are in a successful pop group and we're having number ones and we've toured the world, which is just wonderful, I think it's difficult then when you start to get the press intrusion um, and there's definitely a negative side to fame. But for me, I've never dwelled on that. Well, tell me what brought you to Dubai. And I must point out again, we're at Dubai Performing Arts School, yes. which you helped establish. You know, talk me back through how that all came about. So 
if we go back slightly, I, I think the, the reason that myself and my husband, Johnny, and our two children, Jade and Star Lily, we moved here in 2011. And the reason we came out was because we came on holiday here and we fell in love with Dubai and um, we bought a place on the Palm. And after a couple of years, we realised we saw a gap in the market for a performing arts school um, such as uh, DPA. That's what we're known as, DPA. And because I've trained at Italia Conti Theatre um, in, in London and Johnny trained at Performers, so these are vocational colleges, very prestigious, and we just felt that there was um, a niche here and there's a desire from the children to perform. And I, I think also there's so many benefits for children performing, such as confidence building, um, the social skills, also public speaking as well. So regardless of what field they're going to go into in their career when they're older. It's the confidence building. It's yeah. just, honestly, it's life skills. So that's fantastic. But also in the last three years, you've been able to expand to your new home. We have, we've been very lucky. We're supported by Talim and they are one of the leading um, boards for the schools and the education here within Dubai, um, Abu Dhabi and the UAE. And they love what DPA are doing and so they, they've asked us to come and offer our performing arts classes within their schools. We are very hands-on here at DPA. Um, we're here, we're open six days a week running classes for children from three years up to 18 years. And actually we've just launched our BTEC in performing arts Fantastic. here in this school, in Dubai British School, Jumeirah Park. And it's the first BTEC in Performing Arts Level 3 across the whole of the UAE and Middle East. Amazing. So we're really excited. How was it for you when you became a mum and you had to balance and juggle that working career with you know your children? It's not easy and as any working parent out, out there knows and it's still a balance that I'm trying to find and if I'm honest, I do find it difficult sometimes because I have my DPA principal hat on here in Dubai and then I jump on a plane. For example, we recently, I flew to London to record the Royal Variety performance, which is such an event. That's it amazing. It really event. is. It's an incredible event and performance to be a part of and to perform for the royal family in the UK and all the stars that, that were um, appearing on the show. So sometimes it, it's it's strange because I'm, I'm here as principal and everybody calls me Miss Lisa and then I go, I jump on a plane and I'm a pop star again. <laughs> well, Miss Lisa, the pop star, thank you so much for talking to us on oh, the interview today. Jane, thank, thank you. you. So lovely to speak to you. <laughs> thank you.